Good evening. My name is Bruce Montgomery, and thank you for joining me on another edition of Technology Access Television. Well, this is an exciting year, and it's getting more exciting all the time, and we're just getting this whole year started. And, you know, some of the trends that have started in the last few years are carrying over, but they're really morphed into a whole new level of opportunity. And we've heard this talk of green and LEED certification and going green and climate change. And a lot of these things have smacked us upside the head, but we still don't understand what's in it for us. Well, today we're going to dig down a little deeper and get beyond the cover story to where the real issues and opportunities lie. And I'm happy to have a guest with me today that I'm going to call the professor of green. <laughs> yes, that's Mike Thomas of MyGreenMag.org. Uh, and, you know, you hear Mike every Saturday on WVON laying down the law with some of the best ideas and guests and speakers, really raising the level of our consciousness ar around what green is all about. And I'm delighted he could be with me today. Mike, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. And you are the professor of well, green. Well, that's a good compliment. <laughs> I, I, we work hard at it every, every Saturday, 5 p.m., we get on the air. And uh, as one of the listeners say, we just want to be a truth conduit. Well, you have a phenomenal background. You've worked in real estate development. You've been in business. What made you decide to jump off the uh, the radio show and really bring in the green conversation to the Chicago public? Well, you know, as a contractor in uh, 99 uh, up to the great year of 2007, 2008, I don't have to tell you what happened then. Uh, we had the uh, housing cliff, okay. another <laughs> cliff uh, that uh, we need to be mindful of. And at that point, I uh, had a great operation, uh, great teams, construction, we were moving. Uh, the economy, uh, again, uh, SAS swiped a lot of us uh, in the contracting business. Uh, and then I had some time as a retired construction worker to figure out what I really wanted to do. Uh, started doing more research, uh, looked at uh, the green trend itself, uh, sustainability trend, kind of did the research, but realized that it wasn't necessarily a trend, it was just more so something that was coming to its tipping point. Uh, something that uh, was a reality, but it wasn't necessarily a reality uh, for everyone. What mm -hmm. I always tell people, uh, or my interns, or my students, I talk to them when I mentor, I say everybody doesn't wake up at the same time. That's that's correct. So we all wake up. That's but correct. we all don't wake up at the same time. So everybody wasn't waking up at the same time. So we looked at that. I had more time to kind of massage it, see what role I would play in that, uh, because it's very it's a very broad thing when you talk about green or you talk about sustainability or you talk about uh, eco consciousness or any of those things. It's very broad. So you have to kind of get what your strengths are and uh, where you decide where you what role you want to play mm -hmm. and, and where you want to toe the line, exactly. uh, so to speak. Uh, so I knew it was in housing. Uh, uh, always had the aspiration that it would be in housing. I looked at smart homes mm -hmm. uh, as a contractor, but it was too expensive at the time, and mostly high-end individuals were buying smart homes at that time. But mm -hmm. now I think that technology costs and price points have come down. It's a great time now for that innovation to actually take place and take hold. So when did you first launch the radio program where you're uh, the My Green Mag radio show? Well, it started about a year ago to date in December uh, of 2000, this is 13, so 12, 11. 2011, I talked to the owners of WVON, uh, told them about the idea. Uh, they were interested in the idea. They kind of heard tits and bits of what green was. Uh, they was excited. They wanted to do something different. They wanted to add new programming uh, to the radio station. They believed the listeners deserved to hear something new and vibrant. Uh, and we launched. They told me, hey, be here next week. See you next okay. week and it was it was like magic and it's on it, from there yeah we're on from there and uh we just built the audience uh for a year and went there and uh they've supported us along the way and we've just continued to just keep building now the one thing that's so phenomenal about what you're doing is you're bringing in some of the best and brightest thinkers to discuss these Thank subjects you. because you. i guess the thing with sustainability and green like you mentioned it's not like it's a one right answer these are complex issues. When you talk about climate change, when you talk about the impact of different energy choices, right. that's really what it comes down to, is that people have a lot of choice, but right. they need to know what the options and the offsets are. So as you scope out some of these subjects, and that, the reason I wanted to have you on today is as we look at this year, 2013, that we're just sinking our teeth into, what are some of the big trends that you see on the horizon for green and sustainability minded people uh, that, are, that Americans are gonna be faced with this year. Well, before I talk to you about the trans piece, I, I wanted to talk to you in reference to uh, choices. Okay. Uh, be it 
we think we have a lot of choices. I mean, when you really look at, there's really been no real major innovation in the energy sector. There's always been coal or there's always been gas, fossil fuel. Mm -hmm. So those other alternatives or opportunities, solar, wind, geothermal, those things have been laying there and then their technology has been getting cheaper and, and, and more better, if you want to use that for a word, but it's been getting better. So in that point, we, haven't really had a lot of choices, but mm. now we really will have a lot of choices because uh, the cost of solar is coming down exponentially. Uh, solar will be cheaper. So when you talk about trends that's coming on, uh, projecting around 2013 towards the end of this year, if not faster, uh, maybe this summer you'll start to see solar costs down 50, 60 cent a kilowatt, that kind of thing. So it's gonna come down drastically, which means it'll be viable and able to compete with uh, the um, fossil fuels of the world, gas, natural gas. Uh, so that'll be a great trend that'll be coming. Also, uh, be on the lookout uh, for um, a lot of different uh, electric vehicles, those things will be out there, charging stations and how to actually charge those vehicles. Because when you look at, uh, let's say for example, the Nissan Leaf, when you look at the mm -hmm. cost associated with leasing a vehicle that you have no fuel cost on, if your fuel cost is 200 something bucks per month, mm -hmm. now you have opportunity to lease that vehicle there without the fuel cost. There's some savings that's associated with that. So the green revolution or the green movement is really about cost savings, saving green, mm -hmm. and then also the opportunity of making green. Because we found, as we've talked to a lot of nonprofits through our show, and you've been so gracious to listen to us also mm -hmm. uh, and be one of our call-ins and also be a guest on our show, uh, we've talked to a lot of these nonprofits and part of the challenges is gonna be about livable wage. That's gonna be a real big thing about job creation going forward mm -hmm. because everybody doesn't wanna walk, work as a sales clerk. Nothing's wrong with a sales clerk, but other people want something at a higher pay because they have higher expenses. Well, I, I had the opportunity this year of attending a very eye-opening program that was held on the campus of the Illinois Institute of Technology. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm involved there with something called the Urban Innovation Center, but another organization that's there, uh, the Galvin Electric, Electricity and Electrical Institute. Mm -hmm. Here in Chicago, we have the largest test bed for smart grid of anywhere in the United States. Mm -hmm. In fact, Department of Energy has devoted a grant to making Chicago the center mm -hmm. of electric smart grid research right. out of all the different research platforms in the United States. Mm -hmm. Well, I was at a conference around smart grid and energy futures, mm -hmm. and I happened to talk to a brother mm -hmm. who was the CEO and president of Ameren Energy, which is based out of St. Louis. Okay. And he and I had a conversation offline where he said, you know, right now, I'm looking to identify individuals who could come right out of high school, get into a training program, perhaps maybe take a year or two of community college, mm -hmm. but right out of high school with the right skills and the right interest, I could work them into lineman opportunities right, right. because the smart grid is all about rebuilding our hundred plus year old electrical infrastructure, that's right, that's right. which, you know, the people make the joke that if, uh, Alexander Graham Bell was to come back and look at the phone system and see cell phones and iPads and everything. He wouldn't know what he was looking at. Right. But if Thomas Edison came back and looked at the look at the electrical system, he say, "Hey, it's just like I left it. Ain't nothing changed. Right, right, it's right, still right. wires and poles and 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 all these kinds of things." And so that system needs mm -hmm. to be completely rearchitected. That's right, that's right. And there are more than a few mm -hmm. livable wage jobs all up and down the process of mm -hmm. rebuilding that. And this is a thing that really we haven't got the word out about mm -hmm. where the livable wage jobs are because when people heard the Green Revolution, you know, I, I, I remember being baptized by Van right. Jones. Right, that's right. He that's came right. to Chicago. I read his and, book also. You know, yeah, and yeah, had yeah, everybody, yeah. Ooh, man, green right, is what's right. getting ready to happen. Right. And then nothing happened. Yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it kind of just, it didn't really hit a wall per se. I mean, we've got a, a terrific president in office. He's, he's really, really uh, making it happen. We've got a Congress, unfortunately, that's doing nothing. When I say yeah. doing nothing, um, doing nothing of substance to move this country forward. And I think that's a, that's a huge challenge uh, for someone as a president that we have now who's, who's very passionate. And he's put some things on the table. Uh, and again, it's, it's still gonna be a balancing act, uh, but green is 2013. I mean, it's there, it's always been there. Mm -hmm. uh, climate change, they're gonna have to deal with climate change because of Superstorm Sandy. Uh, and what's gonna end up happening, the individuals who may be what I call climate deniers or just mm -hmm. haven't woke up yet, 
The reality that they're going to be faced with is that these costs that they're not accounting for, which is $60 billion for Superstorm Sandy, that they're not accounting for is going to have to go into their risk model. Mm. Now, once it goes into their risk model, if they're not accounting for that money, they are going to wake up real quick and figure out that climate change is real like everyone else is mm -hmm. because it's going to cost them more. So right now, as long as the American government is paying for it, then it's, it's not really viable. But once it starts to affect the individual on their bottom line of their book, then it, eventually they're going to have to they're going to have to tell. Now a lot is always made of policy in mm -hmm. this this issue. You know, people seem to want to look to Washington, to look to Springfield, to look to City Hall and say what are you doing? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. But other people want to say, well, what are the entrepreneurs doing? What are the innovators doing? Mm -hmm. You're an example of an innovator. We right. would not be having a broad conversation in our community right. unless right. you made the right. individual decision right. and sacrifice to say it's going to happen. Right. So it wasn't a government edict. It wasn't a right. plan. You spent your money, invested your own time, right. That's right. brought this show online. So hmm. where are the entrepreneurial opportunities for people in green? I mean, is, is there a place for entrepreneurs to say, I'm going to get out here. Hmm. I'm going to invent. I'm going to innovate. I'm going to bring this word in a new kind of way and begin to create customers right. who benefit from green solutions. Right. So it's not just people talking about, hey, wave the green flag. Right. You know, somebody came by my house, they, they put a green roof on my house, mm -hmm. and I'm saving money. Mm -hmm. They came by and they weatherized my house, and I'm saving money. That's right. Who is that guy? Bring him over my way, because mm -hmm. I was spending this much last, last year on gas, right. now I'm spending this much on right. gas. So people need to find who are the green entrepreneurs right. that are bringing valuable solutions that cause people to say, hey, don't leave me out of the money saving equation. Right. How could I take advantage of that? So what are you seeing in terms of like you have so many guests, you talk to so many people. Mm -hmm. Are you starting to see leadership from green entrepreneurs that have bona fide solutions that they can make available to a consuming public who begin to take advantage of these kinds of things? Well, well, what we've seen in the industry uh, thus far, as we've talked to nu nuclear physicists, uh, we've talked to people from Germany uh, that's been on the air with us. Uh, we've talked to a lot of different people from all over the world uh, that call in or and or on the show uh, from, uh, you know, divestment in fossil fuel uh, with 350.org to all these other great organizations that are out there really leading a charge and leading a fight. Uh, and it's going to really uh, result back to what I think America was really founded on, and that was innovation and that just just do it yourself kind of attitude. Exactly. Uh, and getting that entrepreneurial spirit back is going to actually be the ticket because the entrepreneur themselves won't see the limits within it. Mm -hmm. uh, which is going to allow us to grow because we'll grow outside of what the constraint limits seem to be right now. But there are really no limits when it comes to this. It's just mostly interest, right? I have an interest that, you know, I think you're taking something from me if you put out this iPad, right? Uh, book publishers can look at it a different way or they can adapt, right? They can put their products online or they can say, well, you know what? That's not going to work. We're not going to ever do that. And they can be out of business. So there is a choice that they have to eventually make but adapting is going to be that but the entrepreneur uh, hasn't totally all raised their heads yet okay because they're in the lab so they're raising okay. their hand they're saying look at me you see me but I don't think um, this which is a great time right now I, I don't see everybody's has raising their head yet some people are holding their well, hands well, let's, back. Let's, yeah. let's delve more into this choice issue that, yeah. that you yeah. raised yeah. now for most of our uh, lives living in America and living right. in Chicago, living in Illinois, right. you didn't really have a choice about your, like, like you said, you right. didn't have a right. choice about your gas. Your right. gas came from people's gas. That's you right. Had a That's choice right. about your electricity, right. it comes from Com Ed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, now all of a sudden, there's a little bit of deregulation. Right. There's an opportunity for some choice. Right. There's some of these little companies out here knocking on your door saying, hey, you want to switch, you right. want to try right. this, you want right. to try that. Right. Right. And just when people start thinking there's a entrepreneurial economic choice business, mm -hmm. then here comes the city saying, wait a minute, I'm going to decide for you. Okay. I'm going to switch right. you myself and right. do some wheeling and dealing. Right. And, you know, you can opt out if you want to. Right. Now, what's that all about? Well, that's that's about the aggregation piece. And every city uh, uh, has done mostly that. Suburban cities, Naperville, a lot of other different uh, cities have went into the aggregation piece and said, hey, 
as a collective, we can go out and we should be able to source for our energy at a m less expensive price. And then there's laws in place right now where ComEd, our supplier here within Illinois, mm -hmm. uh, well, Chicago rather, uh, has uh, can only be the distributor of that. So you've got the supplier and you got the distributor side. So uh, there's not, I mean, you know, there has to be more education, which is why we picked up the Greenpreneur Show to let people know about the options and the choices that they have. So I think every municipality has took that option. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think Chicago is special in right. taking that option. Uh, every municipality that I've looked at and researched uh, within the Midwest has looked and chose that. But the, the key piece that you said to that mm -hmm. is opt out. So once you get the education and you get the information, then if it doesn't work for you, you can opt out. And that's mm -hmm. what I love about it is that once you understand mm -hmm. that it either it's good for you or not good for you or does it serve whatever purpose that you're trying to use, then you at that moment in time can have the option to opt out. So uh, And you're still going to have yeah. an option of maybe choosing another alternative that's right that that's like right. you say between distribution and production mm -hmm. that where you can still save money so just because you don't go along with the plan from downtown right. doesn't mean that you still won't have options right. which right. you could take advantage of because i know some entrepreneurs started a company a couple of years ago called power to switch right, right, right. here in so chicago yeah, they online, some yeah. some some guys right. that came right out of university of chicago business school right. had the idea had the concept put the plan together got some financing capital and have a wonderful concept but you know the big part that they need mm -hmm public education, right. how right. do people right. get informed? Right. Because right. we've had a hundred years of people just saying, hey, the phone company is the phone company. Right. Electric company is electric company. Right. Right. Now they're right. starting to understand that they have to well, manage this a little better. Well, if I can describe to you what we see uh, at MyGreenMag.org and on the Greenpreneur Show, uh, what we're getting a sense is pretty much like when the cell phone came on the scene. Uh, there was the landline, you picked up your phone, and then there was the bag phone. There was a phone inside the bag, and then the bag phone went to the cellular phone, which was what they called the brick phone, and then it had the big antenna on it, mm -hmm. and it was real cool. And then it went from there, and then they went smaller. So that's where we are when you ask me where the entrepreneur is at in the green industry. They're there. Okay. And they're, they're simmering. It's like a cake. When you go to cook a cake, you put all the ingredients in, but you still got to put it in the oven. And you've got to give it a time Time the process to rise. It doesn't mean that it's not ready, it's, but it's a certain time when it will be ready. So all those entrepreneurs are there. There's a lot of great innovation going on. There's a lot of great work going on. Uh, there's a lot of different pilot projects that are out there. Uh, but then once they take off in the commercialization, uh, you're starting to see now, you go past Walgreens, you see electric charging station. Uh, mm -hmm. Unfortunately, or fortunately, people will say, well, what is that? So they just see this stub or this box and it's lighting up and it's blinking, but they might just not know what it is, well, but it's there. you're exactly right. I, I read an article that showed the kinds of incentives that people were getting for buying a Honda Prius, for buying mm -hmm. a Nissan mm -hmm. Leaf. Mm -hmm. So the real interesting thing was the people who could afford those cars, mm -hmm. because they're not necessarily inexpensive, were also getting five and seven and eight, nine, in some cases, $10,000 tax breaks That's right. for buying these vehicles. So it was like, right. you're almost getting paid <laughs> to, to drive yeah. this car. And then you have the charging stations. And in many cases, these charging stations are made available as promotions and free. So it's not right. running off right. of your electricity, you're driving to Walgreens, right. plug it in. The parking lots have added right. these things. So these are, but, but what I'd like to see mm -hmm is more conversation in our community, as you said, on innovation. Mm -hmm. uh, for us to not only just think always about being consumers, 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 right. but how can we get in on the production side? How can we get on the skill side of this? Now, this is a right. point that you raised. Right. Uh, along with all of these green activities come mm -hmm. green skills that are needed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who are the energy auditors? Right. Who are That's the right. people That's that right. come out and determine, could this building use LED, energy assessment. LED lighting yeah. energy and assessments. how much money yeah. could be saved. Well, you, well, you've got a lot of great uh, uh, innovators that are out there and organizations that are out there. You've got uh, Delta Institute. Delta Institute mm -hmm. is doing a lot of uh, uh, 
assessment for energy from manufacturing base uh, companies here in, in Illinois, and I think they're doing a great job, terrific job. So when you look, there, there there's a lot of fragmented work going on, but there's work going on. Okay. Um, so I would challenge you, and, and I'm and we're grateful for you being here also, uh, which allows individuals to get this information mm -hmm. because when you look at it, and I challenge you, your viewers to look at the C uh, city of Seattle. When you look, and everybody pretty much almost in Seattle is driving a Prius, what do they know <laughs> that everybody else doesn't know? And once the money has run out, also often you hear, you know, we missed a train, or that was what we missed. So again, the information has to get out there and or it has to catch on some kind of way, which it caught on in Seattle, and Seattle is saying, hey, we're, gonna, we're going all the way green. They're looking at policy, they're looking at uh, curbs, roadsides, so they're taking a lot of opportunity. So you, you can't be upset that everybody around town is driving a Prius, but you know, $10,000 tax credit or whatever mm -hmm. those situations are, or um, as one journalist said uh, that I heard, it, I almost threw something at the computer. He was like, you know, uh, is for the wind energy with this tax credit, is that, a, is that a handout? And I'm like, how could it possibly be a handout when I feel it's a hand up because you've had the fossil fuel industry now for decades being subsidized and yet are still profitable? Mm. The oil spill technically that happened was, I looked at some information on research, the amount of insurance of what had to be paid from the oil companies was actually the money that they had been subsidized for. So technically they paid nothing. They gave the subsidy back. They gave the subsidy <laughs> back and still was profitable. And now everybody's screaming foul. I'm saying give us the same equal footing. If you want to keep, you know, again, I, I say that's a handout. So, you well, know. It's, it's always handouts, but like you say all the time, people have to pay attention. Right. More than right. anything else, people have to be cognizant of this. So speaking of that, mm -hmm. when you think about leadership in this arena and you look at our state legislatures, you look at our city councilmen, you look at different people, um, when you are talking about these kinds of things, do you have a sense that our uh, legislators are are up to the task mm -hmm. of being on the front end of this as opposed to the back end are they making sure that when some of these policies come down the pipe because you and i had this conversation last mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. when people looked at Solyndra mm -hmm. and they said now here's a startup company mm -hmm. that got tens of millions of dollars didn't do nothing with it went out the back door faster than they got the money how could that be how could one company blow right. hundreds of millions of dollars right. and who made that decision right. so we've got chances being taken at the top with taxpayers money right right but then when somebody wants to do something a little bit smaller he, where does he go to get that same kind of opportunity so are, are you having a sense that our are our policy makers sleep at the wheel and right. this is over their head or right. are some of them starting are they up for the task right. and making sure that we're on some of the opportunity in getting a chance to have r d dollars that let us experiment to bring these new innovations to market as well 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 let's let's uh, you, you, a couple of things that you touched on which are significant one we talk top down um, and i think a great strong leader uh with uh, president obama being in office and talking uh as much green talk as he can talk in reference to uh, moving the country forward and when you're dealing with national security and a whole bunch of other different things. So you've got to kind of balance that out. So from a top-down perspective and talking into Solyndra, I think that was an opportunity and I think that opportunity need to be taken. It's like any other business, you're going to take some risks and I think that risk should have been taken. But m me personally looking into that situation, I might look at that situation as more so that those individuals have really the passion and understanding that this type of business needed to move forward or was it was it a paycheck and that's something that has to be investigated hopefully that will be investigated and they'll take a look at that and see that was what it was for what it's worth but that shouldn't put a great cloud over the industry itself because i think the industry is a great industry now when you talk about politicians or local leaders or legislative uh bodies here i think they need an educational uh dose po2 just like anybody else mm -hmm. i don't think that they individually or personally uh, don't see it. I think they've take some, taken some initiatives when you look at some of the uh, weatherization dollars that came into the state uh, via the uh, uh, Black Caucus. Uh, those individuals, they, they, that was a little forward thinking on that. Okay. And I think that was some great thinking on that. Uh, but I think somebody dropped the ball. 
the ball somewhere has to be picked up, and I think that's now where we're at, is to say that that was great thinking. Now we need to implement and move forward from there, and how do we do that? Do we go out and do we uh, go to bigger organizations and still think top down, or do we take uh, what Bruce is talking about here or what I'm talking about on the Greenpreneur Radio Show from time to time? Do we take our entrepreneurs and kind of break that up a little bit and see if we can get some bottom up? some grass up kind of things. And I think legislators uh, being in that role, being from those communities uh, and understanding and, and living in those communities should know if anything else, that it should be some kind of grassroots movement up because again, that's, you know, small businesses hire a majority of the people. So yes. you just can't go to, you know, the major retailers and say, okay, they're gonna institute this new green technology. It might not necessarily be the case. It might be the church that you go to. It might be the local school now that's a charter school that can make more business decisions on their own, that's going to be the way. Uh, so those are the where you start, and okay. then you move out from there. And and everybody likes to save money. So if somebody's saving money across the street from you, you're going to find out mm -hmm. how they're saving money. <laughs> and I think that's going to be the opportunity. So we've, we tried the top-down approach. Uh, not necessarily that it didn't work. Uh, there's some challenges with top-down uh, when you're dealing with special interests and different things like that. So now we need to maybe refocus those dollars and try bottom-up and see what bottom-up yields us and, mm -hmm. and try that and see what happens. And I think we'll get a different result. So as you sit here with the year ahead, you've had a very successful run with the radio show. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you've not only developed a, a community here in Chicago, but in fact, because of the show being podcast That's and right. online, mm -hmm. technology has leveraged you to have right. not only a national audience, but in some cases, a global well, audience. Well, as you say, a little accelerant. Okay. <laughs> Put a little accelerant on there. Yeah, okay. we've got uh, people all over the uh, world. We're, we're so grateful. Uh, God has definitely blessed us okay. uh, to have individuals all over uh, the world to kind of hear the message and, and they're there they're already there they just want somewhere that they can congregate and get together and uh kind of express it, 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 exactly right so yeah, this yeah. year yeah. what are some of the things that we could look for from the my green mag organization beside the radio show beside the podcast okay. are you going to put together what kinds of solutions mm -hmm. that will allow your listening audience this community here in, locally to really step up another notch in their green ambitions in their green applications what are some of the things you have planned for uh, executing this year? Well, definitely one of the things that we're going to do is we want to go, every, you know, every Saturday uh, that we go in on, on a Saturday at 5 p.m. and we do the show, uh, it's, you never know what you're going to get when you get a phone call in. Okay. So we're going to all, we're going to just go in and we're going to do what we've been doing better. Okay. Uh, we're going to, we're going to up our guest uh, outreach. We're going to reach out a little bit more to a lot more authors, uh, the, uh, Van uh, Jones of the world. We're going to reach out to them a little bit more. Uh, but I'm I'm really a, a, a homegrown kind of guy, so mm -hmm. I like to hear what the what what's going on on the ground. So mm -hmm. I really don't go too far out. But uh, we will pull in some individuals, uh, like we did a nuclear physicist. We'll bring in individuals like that, people from Germany. We'll bring in more uh, individuals to show what's actually working out there, more solution orientated, uh, that kind of thing going forward in the year here. Well, I will certainly uh, assist you. Uh, to Illinois is a very, very interesting state. Mm -hmm. You know, when you take a drive down to Springfield mm -hmm. or Champaign Urbana, and all of a sudden you look at me like, "Man, look at all these, look at all this wind, uh, right? That's all right. These, that's all right. these big, right. big, big wind turbines that's out right. there." That's right. And then you drive a little further, and you're like, well, "What's going on over there?" You see a coal train as far as you can see, that's right. and that's Illinois coal. Then you look up, and then uh, the other day we're hearing people talking about possibly trying to sneak some fracking into the state. That's right, and, that's right. And yeah, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, and, and so yeah. Illinois, and of course, nuclear energy as we know it, mm -hmm. was invented here. That's right, University the, of Chicago. The first yeah. ever reactor, Argonne Laboratory. That's right. So the talent, the skills that right, are here right, at right. our educational institutions within this community right. touch every aspect of energy. And so it would only be appropriate That's that right. the professor of green <laughs> and my green mag would be here in Chicago. Yeah. And so my, my hat's off to you Thank for you. Uh, you. some years of bringing great information to yeah. the community. I'm delighted to partner and be right. supportive of what you are doing. And I think this year is gonna be another year of just another level of success for what uh, Professor Mike Thomas is doing in educating uh, this community about green opportunities. I want to thank you so much. Well, I appreciate it, Bruce. It's been a pleasure <laughs> to be on your show, and you're doing a great job here. 
Definitely well, I, I hope you learned something today. I always learn something when I sit down with the professor, and uh, you, you should too. You can catch him every Saturday. That's right, every Saturday, week in and week out, 52 weeks a year on the one and only WVON, bringing green and sustainability and eco-friendly news and opportunities to this community. Hey, this is the kind of thing you learn. Hey, who says television can't teach you something? I hope it can, I hope it can teach you something. It's always teaching me something. Hey, I enjoy every day of great. 